In the exam, you might be asked to outline and evaluate biological therapies for abnormality. Um, so ab abnormality is when we're talking about um, psychopathology, any kind of um, mental health issues. So that's what it means. So it might say outline and evaluate biological therapies for abnormality, or it might say discuss biological treatments for depression. Um, it depends how specific the question is. But if it does say outline and evaluate biological therapies for abnormality, it's talking about two things in particular. You need to talk about drug therapy and electroconvulsive therapy, also called ECT. So we're going to look at those two things now. Um, so the, we'll start with the drug therapy and you need to know about two types of drug therapy, antipsychotics and antidepressants. So <clears throat> antipsychotics treat schizophrenia um, and psychosis. Often people who have schizophrenia experience psychosis. And I really recommend that you watch this excellent film made by someone in Manchester about psychosis. I've put the link to it in the description of this um, video. And so antipsychotic drugs are um, used for schizophrenia and psychosis and they are chlorpromazine and clozapine. Those are the ones that you need to know about. So I always think about chlorpromazine as chlorpromazine and it just helps me remember and clozapine I find easier. So, um, so when people take chlorpromazine or clozapine it is because they've got an issue with a neurotransmitter called dopamine. So dopamine is the neurotransmitter that deals with, I'll just check my notes, um, physical movement, memory, alertness, attention, emotions and perceptions of pain and pleasure. So everybody has dopamine going on in their brain, but people who have schizophrenia and psychosis, there's a theory that they've got too much dopamine going on. So um, how does it work? So we're going to look at... Um, well, the two types, so chlor chlorpromazine and clozapine. Chlorpromazine is known as a typical um, drug for, um, for schizophrenia and a conventional one, that's what I mean to say. It's seen as conventional and typical. And clozapine is seen, is called atypical, so it's n so obviously it doesn't seem to be used as much. If it's atypical, that means that it's um, it's probably just used as a last resort. Um, so both of these treat the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. And I say positive because it sounds odd, doesn't it? Because the symptoms we're talking about are delusions, auditory hallucinations, and disturbances of thought. So it treats those positive symptoms. Uh, obviously the word positive just, it must be a medical term that means those are the symptoms. They must just be called it in medical terms. So the people who have schizophrenia and, um, and psychosis, if they take chlorpromazine, then it is going to deal with those issues that they have. And if you've watched that excellent film that was made by some people in Manchester, you will see that having schizophrenia and psychosis can be very frightening for people. It can be very disturbing and not a pleasant experience at all. So it seems great that there is a drug that's developed to do that. So the way it does it, um, you in the brain, now forgive me I'm no biologist, but you have the top of the neuron and the bottom of the neuron, that's how I see it. Uh, the top is called the presynaptic cell and the bottom is the postsynaptic cell. And so the neurotransmitter dopamine has to go from the top down to the bottom and it jumps across the, the synaptic gap or the synaptic cleft. And one of my students said to me that they do, they always think of it kind of going zzz, it goes from the top zzz, to the bottom. And so the, bo the postsynaptic cell has got all these receptors and they're going, ooh, lovely dopamine, thank you very much. And they grab hold of the dopamine and draw it down, that's how I see it, into the cell, into the bottom of the cell. So if you've got too much dopamine going on, um, then we need to kind of stop that. And the chlorpromazine works, um, you'll see on the picture that hopefully I've managed to insert into this, uh, the blue 
um, things on it called dopamine antagonists, that's your chlorpromazine, they bind to but do not stimulate the receptors. So you can see it, it's a kind of blocking the dopamine. It's not blocking all of them because everybody needs dopamine, but it's blocking some of them and so you're not getting as much dopamine and that means that that is going to stop the auditory hallucinations, hopefully, the positive symptoms, the, um, the disturbances of thought. So that's how it works. And the only difference with clozapine is that the, the little blue bits, the, when they bind to the receptors, they don't bind as long, so they disappear more quickly. In your textbooks it will say this causes less side effects, but all the research that I've done and heard like anecdotal accounts says it kind of causes more side effects, but um, that's, that's what it does. So the next drug we're looking at, so that's antipsychotic drugs for schizophrenia and psychosis. The next drugs we're looking at are antidepressants and that sounds quite obvious doesn't it antidepressant it stops you being depressed and there are two main groups of antidepressants tricyclics and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors you might want to say that to yourself selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and it's okay in the exam to refer to as SSRIs so both of these work to increase the same neurotransmitter activity um, but they work in slightly different ways. You don't need to know about the tricyclics for AS, but some of the research studies mention them, so it's good that you know the word and that you can hopefully spell it, tricyclics. You do need to know about the SSRIs and how those work. So hopefully this picture is coming up, so you can see you've got the top of the neuron, the bottom of the neuron, the well they call it the presynaptic and the postsynaptic. And the neurotransmitter, this time serotonin, serotonin is the neurotransmitter that you want to know about, wants to go from the top to the bottom. But in depressed people, the serotonin is often lacking. They haven't got enough serotonin going on. So the serotonin, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors act to stop the reuptake of serotonin. Because when the neurotransmitter goes from the top to the bottom, and it goes zzz, and all the receptors are like, yeah, let's have it. Naturally, um, some of that serotonin reuptakes and goes back up to the top of the, the neuron, to the presynaptic cell. And so the SSRIs, they block the reuptake. They stop the reuptake. So that creates more serotonin in the synaptic gap. And so the receptors can go, great, we'll have that, we'll have that. And so more of the serotonin will go to where it's meant to go. And that alleviates the symptoms of depression in many people. Not all people, but many. Some very um, like famous SSRIs are things like Prozac, Siroxat, Sertraline, Citalopram, and the list goes on. So um, if you're evaluating it, then take a look at this picture that I'm just going to upload. Uh, the World Health Organization reports that it is extremely effective drug therapy. So um, when 55% of people relapsed after they'd taken a placebo, so a placebo is like a fake drug, so you take it but it has no physiological effect. And when people with schizophrenia had taken um, placebo antipsychotics, so it did nothing, but it was only the psychological effect, then 55% um, of people relapsed. Only 25% of people relapsed um, who had taken chlorpromazine. So you can see that it was much more effective. Um, however, there is this statistic, 2 to 23% of people when treated with chlorpromazine and family intervention, so with psychological support, that was the most effective treatment. Um, another strength of drug, another strength of drug treatment is it's easy to use. You can just take a pill um, without really thinking about it. It's really quick, little effort, you just have to remember to take it. it. Takes much less time, effort and motivation than other things like psychoanalysis, which could take years of psychological therapy. But Coma 2002 said actually it's a mixture of the two, like drug therapy with some kind of psychological support, which will be most effective. But for the purposes of this, it's just very easy to use drug therapy. A limitation of drug therapies 
um, there's been some meta-analyses, one that identifies where placebos are almost as good as real drugs, so therefore what's the point of taking real drugs, and that was Kirsch 2002. And then on the other hand, Mulro 2000 did a meta-analysis and found that um, tricyclics were 60% effective whereas placebos were only 35% effective. So you can see there's you know, there's so many meta-analyses that go on and these have given evidence for and against. Major issue with um, any kind of drug treatment for anything is that it treats the symptoms but not necessarily the cause um, of what's happening. So supposing you were taking antidepressants because you were depressed about something, something had happened, maybe someone might have got divorced or you know some, something awful that makes you feel depressed. So you take the antidepressants and it deals with the symptoms of depression but once you stop taking them that thing that has caused you to be depressed has not been dealt with and may actually cause you to relapse. Um, please don't take this as saying that you shouldn't take antidepressants, this is just stuff for the exam. Obviously some people, you know, if something awful like they've been bereaved, um, then perhaps taking antidepressants would be helpful in getting them through that period and may they probably get some you know support and counselling alongside which would deal with it but for the exam if you just take drug treatment then it treats the symptoms but not the cause. Another limitation are side effects so um, you can uh, search on YouTube and find tons of anecdotal evidence of people who take things like chlorpromazine or clozapine and the side effects sound quite quite hard to take. Um, one person, I watched a video and he said the drooling, so when he takes antipsychotic drugs, clozapine, the drooling is so bad that he wakes up choking thinking he's dying because he's choking on the drool because it causes a um, huge amount of drooling. And so that's the tip of the iceberg really. With it, There's all sorts of side effects with any kind of drug that you would take. Um, and on this picture, hopefully you can see th like the antidepressants can cause anxiety, nausea, agitation, dizziness, sexual dysfunction, constipation. So you can see it, it's difficult and one of the main problems of side effects is that people stop taking their medication because they don't like the side effects and so the therapy fails. And that's drugs. So now that's the first biological therapy or treatment for abnormality. The second one is called electroconvulsive therapy and it's the most controversial type of therapy you can think of. Um, so the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, NICE, they recommend that electroconvulsive therapy for depression should only be used if all other treatments have failed and all, the, all other medications, so if they might have had psychotherapy and antidepressants, if they fail they recommend ECT or if the condition is life-threatening. So if someone is genuinely going to kill themselves, they say, right, doesn't matter, we haven't tried anything else, but let's, let's do this because they are gonna die if we don't. So um, there's loads of great stuff on YouTube to, to look at electroconvulsive therapy, and I'm gonna put a link to the thing that I want you to watch, my students and anyone else who's interested. Uh, we watched it in class and it's about 13 minutes, so the, the link should be in the description point here. Um, and it's great, it shows you people who are for it and people who electric convulsive therapy and against it and they show you the mechanisms, how it actually works. Um, it's a brilliant video and I'm going to put the link in the description point. Um, so watch that and you should be able to find out all about it. So when you have electric convulsive therapy, um, you are, you have it's all in very controlled conditions, uh, very medical conditions, so watch the video um, and you will have oxygen throughout the treatment, you will be given a relaxant because if you don't your body like tenses up when they put the, um, the electricity through your brain and you can have fractures and so it can actually break bones in your body. Um, they put the Electric, electricity through your brain to induce a seizure and it's the seizure that they think is the thing that actually stops the depression. So have a look at that video and it will give you 
probably all the information that you need um, in order to kind of talk about electroconvulsive therapy. Regarding evaluating it, there, um, the, effect, there, the effectiveness of ECT, there's research for it um, and there's research against it, so you'll need to know those. So I'll um, show you this, this slide here, this picture here. Um, some people like Gregory gave sham ECT, which is like placebo ECT, and so they wired them up and you know made them unconscious and did everything except actually do the electricity and they found significant difference in favour of real ECT so they said it was effective um, but certain people like Hussein found no difference in response to ECT in people who were treatment resistant to depression so some people you know they tried everything else and then they tried that and they still were depressed so have a look at that, you know, have a look at this and make sure you know the research for and against. A big limitation of ECT is other side effects. Uh, DATO identified possible side effects as impaired memory, cardiovascular changes and headaches. On this picture here it says what side effects did Helen Crane experience. She's in that video that I've told you to watch. So she's the one, she talks about how she didn't remember going on holiday but she didn't remember really significant things like her mother dying and felt like she had to go through that bereavement all over again even though her mother had died two years previously and she said she got headaches and she said that she what was the other thing oh yeah she couldn't remember words uh, exactly like I just had so she had word finding difficulties which she said were frustrating but it was the things like not remembering her mother had died that were really really like traumatic for her. Um, the, the Department of Health report from 1999 found that 30% of people reported that, ha that it had resulted in permanent fear and anxiety from having the treatment. So, um, so yeah, so if you get a question in the exam that says, discuss the biological therapies for abnormality, they're talking about drugs and they're talking about ECT. If you get a six marker, which would probably just be outline, you don't need to worry about the evaluation. Um, you could either talk about drugs in a lot of detail and um, a little bit of ECT. Um, I would probably go for both. The examiner said to me that if you get a 12 marker you've got to have probably at least two studies or two, you know, in this case two treatments and it's got to be in detail. So I'm just thinking though, like with the cognitive treatments, that doesn't count because you've only learned about rational emotive behavioural therapy. But for this one, for the biological treatments, just go for drugs and ECT. Okie dokie, good luck.